When I was about four years old, television was a very new thing. In those very early years of my life, I remember watching a program in which a clown, probably Clarabelle, defied gravity by floating across the screen. Unnerved by seeing something so strange, something I knew couldn't be real, I asked my father about how this could be. My dad told me not to be alarmed or frightened about what happens on television. They're just selling soap, he said. Just selling soap. Implicitly, my dad was telling me not to take TV seriously. He was teaching me that reality is out here, not in the box. What's in the idiot box is not real. Now fast forward 50 years and see how right my dad really was. Here's an example of what I mean. Suppose three black helicopters landed in your neighbor's yard yesterday and a military SWAT team storms his house, drags out his family and brutally murders them in the street. And let's say the 200 horrified neighbors witness this bloodshed and tell everybody they know about the brutality they've seen with their own eyes. Well, in today's America, if this atrocity was not reported on Channel 13, it just didn't happen. My point is that today we look for validation of truth by whether or not it is reported on television. In other words, what's in the idiot box has become what is real for us, what's out here in the real world is not real for us unless we get confirmation from the tube. Whether or not it was originally intended for this purpose, nowadays when we watch a TV program, we are being programmed. We are being conditioned as to how to think and feel and react to the programmer's point of view. This is just as true of the news and political programs as everything else. And I have come to believe that we are very often being programmed to believe our government officials no matter what lies they tell us and no matter how unreliable their statements and how dangerous and lawless their actions. Here's just a brief example of what I mean. When it was first reported by a non-mainstream news organization called Natural News that the government was buying 1.6 billion rounds of ammunition to use domestically, this group was tagged by the mainstream media as conspiracy theorists, and it was widely claimed that these allegations were false. But later, after the media was unable to suppress the truth about these huge ammo purchases by the U.S. government, the script got flipped. Now we are told that these purchases are all about saving the taxpayers money by buying in bulk. So the government's purchase of 1.6 billion rounds of ammo was all about saving you money. Please consider that this is enough ammunition to shoot every person in America five times. If this is bulk purchasing, it's the equivalent, according to Mike Adams of Natural News, of you and I driving to Costco and buying 50,000 pounds of peanut butter and having it loaded onto railroad cars with the claim that we're saving money on peanut butter. Well, all of this reminds me of the old Groucho Marx line, where he challenges someone he is flim-flamming by asking, hey, who are you going to believe, me or your own eyes. Well, I believe my dad. He was right that they are selling soap, but they are also selling the decline of a once strong, virtuous American culture. And it's time I stopped buying it. Last week, I canceled my cable subscription. I'm giving up the idiot box for good. This reality is out here. I'm going to believe my own eyes. This is Michael Anthony Perica for Institute on the Constitution, bringing you the American view.